Hey everybody, Bob Babbitt here. This is Breakfast with Bob from Challenge Daytona and the PTO 2020 Championship. We are brought to you by Captiva Spine, John Hall Chevrolet, USA Triathlon Foundation Risk Partners, and the PTO, the Pro Triathletes Organization. This next young man has a wild card entry here into Challenge Daytona, but he's certainly somebody who could win this race. 2019 70.3 world champion, Mr. Gustav Eden joins us. How you doing, sir? It's pretty good, pretty good. Just shout out the, the track behind us here, and it's, it's feeling great to be here in Daytona. Uh, what do you think of riding on this course? It looks really simple, but when you come for the wind, it's actually quite a, a challenge to ride around here. So uh, you have to ride smart, even though it's just go round and round and round. Yeah. yeah for sure. So last year, I think you surprised some people uh, yeah. going and <laughs> winning 70.3 Nice, for winning the world championship, and you were on a road bike. Right, and I remember you bridging up to Alistair and, and going by and then running away during the, during the half marathon. Did you surprise yourself? Uh, not really. No. I am a quite confident uh, guy, so I really believe that I could win. But yes. of course, to go and actually do it is something different. So even though I wasn't really surprised by, uh, by that I won, right. it was still um, yeah, it's, it's, it was a great experience. And yeah. So it was super. And you had raced Alistair Brownlee in, uh, on the ITU circuit before, so yeah. you yeah. weren't intimidated by him. Uh, maybe not intimidated, but I knew his strength, and I knew that it's going to be a real challenge to be able to beat him. So yes. uh, I knew that I had to be really smart. I couldn't just race on power alone. I had to be like smarter than him to be able to beat him. And I think that's the difference I made in Nice last year, that I maybe raced a bit smarter on the bike yes. and maybe on the run also. And that's how I, I was able to win. Well, and you were the only guy on a road bike. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'm not sure if, I, if the road bike was the reason that I won, but if it was definitely one of the parts that made me win, yeah. And, and had you ridden the course beforehand and, and decided yeah. to make that move? Uh, no, I had just checked it out on Strava and like yes. on maps and everything. And I, the reason why I rode the uh, road bike was because um, I was racing Lausanne World Championship yep. race uh, the week before. And that was the main objective of the year. Right. And that was only one week before. So I thought a challenge of switching to another position to a new bike in only like six days mistake yeah uh, it was i think it was b to to be too hard so yes. then i just choose my road bike because it was what i was used to so you also did the test race for the olympics yeah that's true in, yeah. in tokyo and yeah. what do you think of that course um it was uh, on paper a really simple course but it was so much wind there and also the heat was really really challenging right so it made for a, a really hard race and going into the race, I wasn't really like, that confident because my shape was, it was okay. <laughs> but what I had done right was preparing for the heat. Yes. So even with an okay shape, I actually came away with fourth place there. So uh, the Olympics next year with a better um, like all-around shape right. and the same preparation, I think the, the victory is, it is in within reach. And you were, we were chatting beforehand about it, the heat is going to be a big issue yeah, right in Tokyo. For sure. And you found a place in Kohu. Yeah. Uh, and you'll be training, training there because you, you, while you don't necessarily feel like you're a, a great in the heat, if you train for it, you can be great in the heat. For sure. So the Team Norway and Team Japan is actually a collaboration. Mm -hmm. So we are training with uh, Team Japan there in uh, Kohu. And um, yeah, it's been really good. Some of the days there was so hot that yes. um, the tarmac was too hot to run on for the <laughs> brick sessions. So I, I need to have socks on for my training <laughs> session because it was too hot. You would burn your feet. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. So you know you'll be ready for that. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, really painful. But when we came down to Tokyo uh, after preparation, the heat didn't bother me actually at the race. So um, if I can manage to do the same in uh, Tokyo in a real deal next year, then it's, then it's going to be good. So by winning 70.3 World Championships, you qualified for Kona. Yeah. And uh, one of the cool things with COVID, even though it brings a lot of bad things, yes. was that Ironman actually um, took away the validation rule. So actually I can race Kona without doing the validation race beforehand. So um, if everything goes after plan, Kona next year will be my first ever long distance race. After distance. hopefully winning the gold medal. Yeah, after, <laughs> <laughs> after winning Tokyo, my goal for sure is winning Kona. 
So to do the like winning both in one year, that would be nobody's ever done that. No one ever done that, and it's going to be really cool if I manage to do it. But even like racing Kona, it's it's so big, like anyway. So even though I possibly may not be able to win, it's still going to be an experience for life to race there. In your 24. 24. 24 years old, yeah. and <laughs> you have an opportunity to go and do something no one has ever done. Yeah. Uh, the heat training that you're doing for Tokyo is going to be great for Kona as well. Yeah, that's, uh, that's why it's, I think it's going to be uh, good to race Kona like, without doing um, any Ironmans before because yeah, my training program is pretty uh, volume-based, so yeah. I think I will manage to do an Ironman okay. And people are saying Kona, it's that's much different than a normal Ironman. And right. I for sure believe it. But that's mostly because of the conditions. But with Tokyo preparation and the heat preparation, I think I hopefully will be able to manage the conditions also. You won't have a problem. So your first 70.3, what, you were 20 years old yeah. in, in Norway and you won. Yeah, <laughs> Ironman Hegesen 2016. <laughs> <laughs> and then you were second in Bahrain in 2018. And... Uh, you ran a 107, 13 half marathon off the bike. And I still came second. And you came, <laughs> who won? Christian Blumenfeld, my training mate. Oh, okay. So we have been doing all the training together. And uh, it's actually quite funny because um, I was leading there. Yes. And I, I wanted him to uh, like contribute in a run. So I yes. didn't pull the run all the way. And then I turned around, looked at him and like, make him go in front of me. And then I can hear him fake breathing. Oh, yeah. Like he didn't want to pull. So I then I just stop in one of the drinking stations to let him go. And it was quite funny because that's just like something we do in training. And to do it like in, uh, in a race, I actually have to laugh during the run because <laughs> I like, Christian, you are so stupid. I'm not going to fall for this <laughs> stupid trick. <laughs> the fake, you're not fake tired. Yeah. You're not, you're you're not, not tired. tired. You're working me. <laughs> yeah. I like that. <laughs> so th wasn't there a race where the three of you guys swept the podium? Yeah. In, uh, in Bermuda, yes. the ITU World, uh, World Series Bermuda. Three Norwegians taking yeah. the podium. How cool was that? That was amazing. Yeah, it was really cool. So uh, we had been in altitude training, and we didn't have in a, any tactics going into the race. Right. But still, we managed to pull something off that no one ever has done before in the male side. So it was um, truly spectacular. What got you in the triathlon originally? Um, yeah, I used to be a cyclist before, yes. and I had a really big love for running also. And uh, I knew for cycling that I wanted to big, win the biggest thing ever, like Tour de France. And I knew that to win the Tour de France, you have to be on the bike like six, seven hours a day. Yes. And no running, nothing else. And I really loved running, and I didn't want to give up the running. So instead of like, yeah, sacrificing the mm -hmm. run, I um, found out triathlon is what I want to do, and I have to learn how to swim. So since then, so you didn't know how to swim. Uh, I, I mean, knew how to float, yeah. <laughs> but not how <laughs> but to but swim. But not swim competitively. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, since then, I've been working a lot of my swimming. It's still my by far weakest uh, right. leg, and I'm working really hard on it. And it's been a big challenge over the years to prepare myself for the swim. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes it's not really fun to uh, to swim, but when I see the um, the advance that I make and I'm getting better and better, it's right. worth it. So. Yeah. So well, your older brother is a top triathlete as well. Yeah, he was. And uh, he set the Norwegian record for uh, the long distance, uh, the, uh, the whole Ironman. 819. Yeah. 819.54. It's, uh, it's not the August. good time. <laughs> but it's okay for an age grouper. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mikael. I'm going to yeah. tell your brother he said that. <laughs> oh, my God. So, uh, so your first ever Ironman will be Hawaii. Yeah. There are very few people who can say that. Yeah. That's very, very cool. Yeah. Um, when you look at this, uh, when you look at a race like this, do you try to figure out who you're going to have to, do you work, look at the other athletes or do you just worry about yourself? Um, it's a bit of both. Okay. I think you have to, uh, you have to race the other athletes. It's, like, it's not like, it's not like a timed event. It's not right. like you're racing for a time here. Right. It's, you're racing the other athletes, but you still want to, uh, to do your do your best like and to do your best you have to um, to kind of do an even pacing yes but you also have to play the others so it's kind of like a mix between doing what's best for yourself and doing what's worse for the others so it's uh, it's kind of like a mind game with the others but i think um, for this race 
like it's a bit shorter than a normal half Ironman. Right. And um, is that good for you? I'm not sure. Yeah. But it's I think it's more open for more tactical race then. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, because when you do when ITU races are pretty tactical. Yeah, it's purely tactics mostly. Yeah. yeah. And usually the 70.3s are just pure physical. Yeah. Right? You just go. Yeah. So and this is going to be a good mix between those two. Yeah. And do you like the idea of the 20 meter draft rule? Uh, yeah. For me, it, I think it's going to be okay. I feel like I'm quite aero on a TT bike. Yes. And uh, I have okay strong legs. So uh, okay strong legs. Yeah. I think <laughs> yeah. you're you're a 107 so half marathoner. I think you're okay. Yeah. So uh, I think it's going to be uh, good. Yeah. What would it mean? We, we're talking the PTO is putting up. It's like one point one five million dollars. Yeah, it's absolutely crazy. Crazy, yeah. right? It, this is, and the field is the deepest. Yeah. You know, you you race every weekend against Johnny Brownlee, Alistair Brownlee, yeah. Javi Gomez. They're here plus Lionel Sanders and uh, Sam Long and yeah. all the rest. Basically, of those everyone. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. Uh, uh, what would it mean to you to win this race? It's uh, like. Hit. It's really everyone is here. Yes. So to be able to win here, you are kind of like the best triathlete of 2020. Oh, you for are. Sure. Right. So, uh, and you'd like that. Yeah. <laughs> of course you would. That, that's what I'm training for, to beat the others and be uh, number one. So, uh, of course, the prize money here is, is, um, is a huge bonus. But for me, dollars for yeah, first. Yeah, yeah. It's absolutely huge. But personally, the feeling of beating the others, that's... That's what you like. Yeah. You, for sure that's it, it, absolutely crazy you want to be the best triathlete in the world yeah so hopefully we'll see someday that I, <laughs> i'll be able to do it that yeah well I, I don't think very many people would be betting against you you've uh, <laughs> you show that on big stages especially yeah. when people aren't necessarily talking about you that you like to surprise people yeah so hopefully i can do the same now i love it hey gustav such a pleasure to meet you and we'll get to do this again next october yeah. in kona yeah. which will be really really fun looking forward to it gustav Eiden has been our guest everybody again breakfast with bob from challenge daytona in the pto 2020 championship hold on we'll be right back